this is the result of generations of Democrats and Republicans and no change. I mean, we've had elections and elections and elections. And in Philly, it's just the Democrats, but nationwide. And the change has not happened. They talk, people vote, and nothing changes. Just because they say it's going to change. That's why I'm saying it's going to take, take more. It's going to take getting out of the voting booth in addition. You know, voting's important, but you got to get out of the voting booth and speak up on your own with a group. Get more involved. Build a union. Get a, you know, join these demonstrations that are going on. That's the way we're going to begin to change things. The other thing is, um, the, uh, the media could uh, stop censoring all the politicians, too. The people who are trying to do things differently. Like, how many candidates are there for mayor? There's five. How many do they show on the various uh, discussions? I wouldn't call them debates. Discussions? <laughs> Melissa and Jim. That's it. There's three other candidates. So when I think about this, I mean, I, I was this voter, right? And I didn't vote because I was fed up with politics. And I was fed up with feeling like all I ever had to vote for was the lesser of two evils. Felt like I couldn't change anything. Um, felt like my vote did absolutely nothing to actually change my daily life because politicians didn't listen to me. Right, that's why I think millennials don't go out to vote. Uh, I'm 28, so I'm not, I'm not out of this age group, right? Um, and so when I talk to my students now, and particularly about this election, um, this is gonna be a low turnout election. I hope I'm wrong, I really do. And I hope that I'm wrong because millennials realize that this is an election where even one vote can make a difference to elect candidates that have a meaningful attachment to your lives. So you have candidates here who understand what you're going through, right? I, I as a public school teacher, I'm interacting with students every day. I am a millennial. We're going through these things every day. I know what it is to live check to check. We know how to get these policies in City Hall that are really going to change our daily lives and make things better. We don't have to have the people who are just going to be getting money from developers, who are going to be indebted to the Chamber of Commerce. We can have people in City Hall who are going to speak for us, but we can only have that if we're going to vote. There is a second part to that, though. Even if we are going to have these lesser of two evil candidates, even if we are going to have these candidates who aren't speaking for us and are just in office, the only way we ever get them to pay attention to us is by going into the voting booth and hitting the voting button. Even if you don't care about any of the candidates and never pick one and just hit the voting button. The only way that we ever get a say is by in some way involving ourselves in electoral politics. And that's really one of the things I'm trying to do in this race is show that we can have regular people in politics. You don't have to be a policy hack. You don't have to come from a political background. You don't have to have this amazing skill in industry. We can bring politics back to being political servants who are in touch with the ground. We are smart too. We have ideas too. We can make a difference in politics as well. And that's why you should come out. I just want to make just a really fine point about what something Kristen said. The last election for that seventh seat on city council was decided by 200 votes. The election before, I think it was a little more than a, than 100. So it, it, your vote, and the votes of a couple of friends can really make a, a significant difference in what we are all competing for. Let me, uh, 